So as Father, in Jesus' name, as I come before you on this glorious day, Lord, I just want to bless you. I want to honor you. I want to magnify your holy name. Thank you, O oh God, for using me as your vessel this morning to bring forth the word for we, your people, O oh God. Father, even now, God, I submit my will to yours, O oh God. None of me, God, but all of you, O oh God. I choose to decrease, O oh God, that you increase. Father, I ask that you let them see you, hear you, O oh God, and that they who have an ear to hear will hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I quench every fiery dot even now, right in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you release angels even now to encamp around me, O oh God. Hallelujah, so that your word may go forth with free course. And Lord, I give you praise, I give you honor, I give you glory. In the name above every name, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, it is so. And so it is. Amen and amen. Thank you, God. I acknowledge the apostle and pastor Herring, to all the ministers, all the leaders, to my family. My youngest daughter is here. Monique, would you please stand? I saw my nephew come up. Are there other family members that were able to come today? If so, would you please stand? And I see a few friends of mine who came. Would you please stand? <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. Um, to the Living Word family, I love you all. You are a precious, precious gift to the kingdom. And I thank God for you for welcoming me, um, for just embracing me. So I just want to say thank you. Amen. You know, in this season, many of us who like to work in the yard, we're working out in the yard, getting our yards ready for the fall and for the upcoming winter season. And when we're doing that, we're looking for uh, any areas that need to be improved, whether there's weeds, uh, whether there's some crabgrass, and then sometimes we can see where there's been some damage done because of roots that have grown under the ground and have harmed our pavement. Now, I had that experience a few years ago where I had, uh, I was noticing these cracks in, this, in the driveway. And I'm wondering what in the world is going on. But the tree that I had in my yard was so pretty. It was so beautiful, especially this time of year, because it had the fall colors. Your orange, your yellows, and your greens were peeping through. And I was like, this is such a pretty tree. But it was causing some damage. It, it was the roots to the tree that were spreading under the driveway. And it caused significant damage. And it was trying to come to my house. So there were some things that you have to do when you have wayward roots. Amen? So you can have something that is so beautiful, but there's some things going underneath that are hidden that can cause a lot of damage. Amen? Let's talk about what a root does in the natural. Because we're going to do the natural, then we're going to go to the spiritual. Amen? So the purpose of a root it acts as an anchor. It holds that thing in place. It digs deep, and it has remarkable strength. And it functions as a stabilizer, and I said it grows below the ground. But it said it takes some time before you see the damaging effects. Amen? It starts small, but then it gets big. Amen? So there's a natural way that we move, remove roots. The study says that you put barriers there. And these barriers deflect the roots from going to areas that you don't want it to go. Amen? Or you can cut away the offending roots or cut down the whole tree, which is what I had to end up doing. And when you cut that tree down, then you destroy the source of nourishment for the roots. 
cut it off. So when the food source is cut off, the roots die. Because what you do not feed, it will die. Amen? And as much as I love looking at that tree, there was a season when God said, it's time to let it go. The subject that I will be speaking from this morning is, it's time to let it go. Amen? So we go into this when we look at our own life's journeys. When we go through life, we encounter some situations that are hurtful, painful. There's a bitterness that can, can creep up in your heart. You can become so angry that you're not able to progress forward because this thing is a seed that's been deposited and it's hurtful. Amen? So we're going to look at the roots that form from a seed of bitterness and the damaging effect that it has not only to you as an individual, but to your persons that are involved in your life, your interpersonal relationship. And as people of God, believers, and those who are non-believers. It's a toxic, toxic thing. It's a bitterness that digs deep into us, into our spirit, into our heart. It causes us so much pain. But yet, as the tree, we adorn ourselves to look so beautiful. And Matthew 23 said, outward sometimes we are white sepulchers. But inside, there's some dead men bones. But today, we're going to uproot the bitterness, the roots of bitterness that can be damaging, but they're very cunning because they hide. Amen? So let's look at the roots of bitterness. We'll start first. I'm going to go through different narratives uh, in order to and, you know, to share with you exactly what the Lord has given me. So my first reference will come from Genesis 1, 26 through 27. Amen? So if you would turn there with me, and it's very familiar. But in the beginning, God had a plan for his people. Amen? And beginning at verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and, all the, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, verse 27 says. In the image of God created he him. Verse 31 says, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was what? It was what? Very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now we know what happened. In the beginning, God said, we are very good. And he created man and woman. But some things happened in the place where he had positioned them to take the authority over all he had created. And man deviated. He disobeyed God. He ushered in sin. And that sin nature continued on from generation to generation. But God had a solution. He had a plan. And that plan is still operating today if we embrace who he sent that we might have life and that bore abundant life. Amen? So, God's, man's disobedience brought judgment on the children of God. They were in captivity for 430 years, but then God sent a deliverer in the name of Moses, who delivered his people out of bondage by supernatural means of parting the Red Sea as a passageway for them to leave that place of bondage to come to a place of safety. And then they were able to look back and see the same passageway that was created for them became a grave for their enemies. And God said to them, the enemy that you see today, you will see no more. Amen. 
So now we come to the first narrative that's going to talk about the ill effects of bitterness on us as God's perfect creation. Let's turn to Exodus 15, 22, please. Amen? Is God good? Hallelujah. Exodus 15, 22. This is a lot of times what happens with us. The children of Israel had been ushered through the Red Sea. God has just demonstrated his supernatural power. They shouted. They sang. They danced. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You did it, God. Oh, Lord, we cried out to you. You heard our cry, God, and you sent a deliverer. How many times did we do that? Lord, hallelujah. I thank you, God. And then we come to the place where they came. So it says in verse 22, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went, how many days? Three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people murmured, we don't do that, against Moses saying, what shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord. Poor Moses. And the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Amen. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance. And there he proved them. See, God is testing our faith. Amen. You just saw the supernatural miraculous work I did. And I brought you to this place. Not that I can't give you water, but I want to see how you're going to act. What's inside of you when you come to that place where it's not sweet anymore? There's some bitterness that's there. How are you going to respond? Are you going to remember what I did at the Red Sea? God has opened up some Red Seas for us. But there's a time that some bitterness comes. There's some pain comes. And God said, what's in you? I'm the same God. I change it not. Amen. Hallelujah. But God said to them in verse 26, and said, God, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statues, I will put none of the diseases upon you which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord God who healeth you. We know him as Jehovah Rapha. Amen. God is saying obedience. Love one another. Be quick to forgive. Remember who I am. I am Jehovah God. Amen. I am the God Almighty. I am El El Yon. I am that I am. Amen. So when we encounter situations in life, we must look to the hills from where our help is coming from. Our help comes from? From the Lord. Amen. The tree, the tree was symbolic of the sweetness of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who was and is and is to come. Amen. And when it was cast into the water, the water became sweet. God said, when you call upon the name of the Lord, those things that have been bitter will now become sweet because he's sweeter than the honey of the honeycomb. Amen. He's that sweet smelling fragrance. Amen. He is God Almighty. Oh, taste and see. Hey, Shabbat. That the Lord is good. Amen. He's sweet. Hallelujah. He turns that that is bitter into sweetness when you put your trust in him. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, we, this is what we go through in our lives today. The seeds of bitterness can come from different sources. Some of these experiences are tests and most of them of our faith, as it was at the bitter waters of Mara. But in times of trouble, we can become so embittered, forgetting the promises of God, but choosing to allow a seed of bitterness to form in the soil of our heart. 
And instead of the fruit of spirit of God coming forth, the fruit of bitterness runs rampant. And it has some damaging effects, as the Lord showed you, even to our health. Now, all sickness and diseases are not as a result of disobedience. Let me give that disclaimer now. Amen. Because as we remember, the disciples asked, who did sin? Amen. The, the, the parents, because we always wonder what you think he didn't sin. You know what Job's friends did. We don't have friends like that. But he said that the glory of God would be made manifest. See, so when I listen to this young man's testimony, brother waiters, when I looked at him and listened to his testimony, do we serve an awesome God? He was afflicted. But the God of salvation, Jehovah Rapha, healed his body. He said, I was paralyzed. I could not walk. He stood here as a manifested glory of what God can do when you put your trust in him and him alone. Let it go. It's time to let it go. Anything that's holding you from receiving the fullness of what God wants to do in and through you, it's time to cut it off in the name of Jesus. You know, when I thought about that root in the natural and how sometimes we can look at something and it can look so pretty, you all know my testimony that I shared that for years I didn't know this thing was still in my heart. It was some anger. There was some bitterness there. And I thought it was gone. But God allowed a situation to come. And it turned my world upside down. Because it did bring on some sickness and disease. It brought on an occlusion in my heart. But there's another story that the Lord told me to share with you. There's some things that you go through and people look at you and they don't even know that you went through it because you don't really truly look like what you've been through. But when you put your trust in God, you can make it. He'll make a way out of no way. He'll make a path in the wilderness and a river in the desert. He is just that kind of God. And a few years ago, I had applied for a position on my job. And I interviewed, got the position. And it had been put all through the, I worked for the state of Virginia. It had been sent all through the email that there was another nurse and I who had been promoted as supervisors. And lo and behold, the health director at that particular time said, there was a mistake. We're pulling back the promotion. And I was like, now God, <laughs> whew. And I was like, I didn't understand that. I could have tore up the health department, but I not cut from that cloth. And I had pressed closer to God. I was in a, in a place where I had said yes. The Lord knows you're going to be tried. And I sat there. This is the epitome of embarrassment. I had served in the health department for years in different capacities, doing different jobs, preparing myself to be a leader, giving all I had. And yet, the thing that you feared the most has come upon you. And I said, Lord, what is this? I went home, I cried, oh my goodness. I cried, I cried, I cried. All night, I went to sleep crying. And the Spirit of the Lord awakened me in the wee hours, as he always does, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. A bag fell over in the chair, and that awakened me. And I woke up crying. And I said, Lord, I don't understand this. And the Lord said, this is a moment of decision for you. To trust in humanity or divinity, which do you choose? He took me to the garden of Gethsemane when Jesus, who was facing the cross, said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. 
And God said, which do you choose? What I have for you, it is required that you go through this. It is a moment of decision for you to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't look to man. Promotion does not come from the north, from the south, the east, or the west, but it comes from me. Trust in me, said the Lord. And I said, God, I trust you, but this hurts. This is a pain, God. Whew. But it was pride. It was pride. Because a neighbor that never comes to my house, I'm still weeping and crying the next morning. But the Lord had strengthened me in that very hour. And she knocked on my door and said, she never comes to my house. And she said, are you okay? I said, I'm trying to be. I'm okay. She said, the Lord sent me here. And she said, listen, would you have gotten more money? Would anything have changed differently, really? And I said, you know what? <laughs> Not really. She said, then let it go. <laughs> let it go. God's got you. Yeah. Amen. And so that's, that's what I had to do. And I had to go through a lot of humiliation and degradation. I had to sit in a cubicle where it was glass and people walked by and they could see me sitting there. I was a spectacle. And you know they're laughing. You know they're whispering. And then there was a word that came back to me. Yes, yeah, she always praying for everybody else, but let me see her get us up out of this. I said, God, you really know how to do it. But he kept me, y'all. He kept me. He strengthened me. There was anointing that was released that I was able to go through that situation. And in an appointed time, when God had me in the refiner's fire. And he said, now you're ready. And I got a supervisor's position. In his time. In Cairo's time. Amen. <laughs> but with that, God bless you. Thank you, sir. You know, it's good to have people who have a sharp discernment. Thank you, sis. Excuse me. Praise God. And so it was. I sat through that. From, it was a while. I hadn't even, they didn't even give me an assignment. <laughs> I just sat there collecting a check. I said, okay, if that's the way you want to do it, okay, I'll take it. But that was the way that it happened with me. That was a seed that could have been deposited in me to have made me embittered, angry, hostile, because what I thought should have happened did not happen but I had to trust the God that I serve, that he knows the way that is right for me. He's the God that orders my step. He knows the plans that he has for me. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to let it go. So we come now to how that bitterness can not only affect us and our health. God said, I came, I sent my son that you might have life and that more abundant life. But circumstances do cause changes if we allow it to. Some things are out of our control. And as we see in the next narrative, if you would turn to the book of Ruth, we would talk about how these things that are not in our control can come and, and, and it can devastate us. It can take us to a low place, you know, a place that you just don't know which way to go. But God, amen. We're going to look at the first chapter of Ruth. Lay a little foundation here for you. Ruth, the first chapter, through the eighth verse, and then we'll go to the 19th through the 22nd verse. Amen. So it says, now it came in to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the names of his two sons, Malon and Shilion, they were Ephratites of Bethlehem, Judah, and they came into the country of Moab, and they continued there. So they stayed a while. 
he left Bethlehem, which means the house of bread. Catch the revelation of that, okay? He, he left the place of provision because God had sent this famine in the day of the Judges, all right? Now, we know in the book of Judges, the last part of Judges said, and the people did what was right in their what? Own eyes. So we have to look at, is this something that God said, I didn't see where God told him to go, but it said he went, amen? And in verse 3, it says, and Elimelech, Naomi's husband died, and she was left, and her two sons. And they took two wives, they took wives, I'm sorry, and they took them wives to the women of Moab. The name of the one was Oprah, and the name of the other was Ruth. Amen? And they dwelt there about ten years. And then Malon and Shilion died. Poor Naomi. And both of them and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. And then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Sometimes we move too quickly. Amen? He's still Jehovah Jireh. And so... When she went forth, verse 7, out of the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on their way to return unto the land of Judah, the land of praise, blessings, abundance. And then Naomi said unto her two daughters, Go, return each of you, return each to her mother's house. The Lord has dealt kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead with me. Amen. And then when we go over to verse 19, and so when they went, they two went, well, you know the story that Oprah decided not to go, but Ruth decided that she was going to follow the God of Naomi. Amen? So the two went until they came. The two is Ruth and Naomi. They came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass that when they came to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them, and they said, is this Naomi? And verse 20 says, she said to them, call me not Naomi. Call me Mara, bitter. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Now God is blamed for that. Verse 21 said, I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home empty. Why then do you call me Naomi? Seeing that the Lord has testified against me. And the Almighty has afflicted me. So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her when they returned to, out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley season. The seed of bitterness will cause your self-image to be impacted. You will not see yourself as God sees you. You will call yourself your situation. She didn't want to be called Naomi, which meant pleasant. She said, I'm not that anymore. I'm my circumstances. God said, you are not your circumstances. You are who I call you to be. This circumstance is not bigger than who I am. I have all power in my hand. You are not Mara. Hallelujah. You are not bitterness. You are not defined by what you went through. Amen. He said, I came to set the captives free. But when we make decisions that are not congruent with the decisions that God has made for our life, these things happen. And then we become angry with God. Lord, you told me. I did what you told me to do, God. And now this thing has happened. My husband, my children are dead. I'm left alone. And in that culture, to be a widow woman was very hard. She was an older woman who had to try to find provisions for herself. She had no husband. She didn't have the capacity to have more sons. That's why she sent her daughters, look, I don't have any more sons in me. Go where you can get married and have a fruitful life. But God has a plan. That that looks like it is no hope. God said, I get the glory out of that. Amen. 
There was a greater cause to this. There was a greater need that God was using Naomi, who was full. Was she full, really, or was she full of pride? Amen. She didn't want to go back, but the circumstances will cause you to go back to some situations that God needs you to visit that you didn't handle right the first time. Let it go. It's time to let it go. You walked away from some situations because they said something. They did something, and you're bitter about it. As God said, okay, you walked away, and I allowed that. But in this season, I need you to get it right. With your fellow man. Amen. God said it's time in this season to let it go. I need to do a work in you. I cannot pour new wine into an old skin, said the Lord. I need to gut you out to do an extreme makeover, Lord says. Hallelujah. You got some stuff in you that I cannot use, said the Lord. I need to uproot it. The spirit of bitterness. Hallelujah. I need to infuse my glory. For I have a great and mighty work for you to do, said the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let it go. In the house of God. I don't deal with him. I don't, I don't deal with her. Really? What if God said that about us? What if God said, I, I, I don't do him. I don't do her. No, I don't have nothing to do with him, honey, because uh -uh, I remember what she did 50 years ago. But you're still holding on to that thing, that seed of bitterness grew, and it grew, and it grew, and now you call yourself Mara. Bitter. You can see it on the faces the joy of the Lord is our strength. But sometimes you see the sour pickle anointing. The bitter anointing. The people don't look like they love God. God said, I need to see more of me and less of you. You know, when the goldsmith is preparing gold, gold is black, it's ugly. But when it goes into the solution, there's some dross that comes off. It's being prepared to be used. And the question was asked, how do you know when it's ready to be used? He said, when I wipe it off and I see my reflection, I know it's ready for the master's use. Amen. God said, I need to see more of me and less of you. Hallelujah. Let it go. It is time to let it go. It's causing sickness. It's causing you to not see yourself as God sees you. You've taken on your own identity of being bitter and angry, unforgiving. I ain't, I ain't ready to forgive. It's a scary and dangerous place to be because we don't know when Jesus is coming back. Are you ready? We all need to get ready. This is the time to get ready, to let the world know, but we need to start here first. He coming back here first. He looking for a church. Us, without a spot or wrinkle. Are we ready? Are we ready to let it go? Now, I know this might not be for everybody, but it's for somebody. Amen? I'm the first partaker. So we become better and bitter and bitter. She went back to her friends. She didn't even want them to consider her as who she was. Don't call me that. See, we, we, we even spew it out of our mouth. Out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth does speak. And we start spewing that out. So then the seed of bitterness can cause us problems with the people in our lives. But I want to make a mention about Naomi. 
And I said, poor Naomi went through all of that, and they didn't even put the name of the book after her. <laughs> it was named after Ruth. But you know, God will use you to usher, usher someone else into their destiny. Amen. And that's what happened with Naomi. Because Naomi was used of God to connect Ruth with Boaz. Amen. It was a divine plan in that. And when you look at the beauty of how God did it, he said, Naomi, I need you to get out of yourself. You know, she was, I had everything going for me. I had a husband. I had children. You know, I had it all. But those children's names, one of them was sickly and the other one was named consumption. So they, they, their names carried disease and sickness. But she gave it to them. And then they married Moabite women. Now, you know about the Moabites, right? The Moabites were descendant of Lot and an incestuous relationship that he had with his daughter. But God did not have them to marry but then God has a plan that goes deeper than what we can imagine because our thoughts are not his. But he used this woman named Ruth to connect with Boaz, who is a kinsman redeemer, who is a type of Christ, to usher her into the genealogy of Jesus Christ. What kind of God do we serve? Amen. She was a, a Gentile. He, and who else is in this genealogy? Is somebody named Rahab, who was a harlot, Hallelujah, that hid the slaves. Amen. So God said, I use who I choose to use. Amen. I don't care what your past was. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new when you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. It is time, y'all, to let this mess go. <laughs> Hallelujah. So lastly, let's look at Hebrews. Amen. We're going to Hebrews now in the New Testament. Praise your name, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Is God good? Is he great and greatly to be praised? Praise your name, God. We're going to turn to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. We're going to look at the 14th to 15th verse and then the 28th to the 29th verse. Amen. Praise your name, Jesus. Doctor, you're looking beautiful as ever today. All right. So we started the 14th verse, the 12th chapter of Hebrews, and it reads, Follow peace with all men and holiness, which no man shall see, without which no man shall see the Lord. 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of what? Root of what? springing up trouble you and thereby many may be defiled amen so what he's saying here is that this epistle was written to people of Jewish background some had received salvation and they were genuinely converted some had confessed to be Christians had been baptized were they part of the assembly, but not been filled with the Holy Spirit. And others in the house, they just said, I don't want none of that. I, don't want, I didn't receive salvation. And then some were apostates. They had become so bitter, and the resultant had a corruptive influence in the church. So we have to be mindful of our lives. We have to be mindful of what we exemplify in our walk. Because there are people who are, we are living epistles, amen? And so when we are conversing with people, when we are talking to them, and if what comes out of our mouth is bitterness, that spirit will let them wonder, well, what kind of God are you serving? You know, if I had even thought about coming to Christ, the talk that you're talking, the things that you are saying would make me not want to serve God, amen? So he said, let your speech be laced with grace, Amen. Let, let the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be acceptable in the sight of the Lord. Amen. That spirit of bitterness would transfer. You can stand and talk to someone. There are some people that you cannot let them get in your ear when they call on the phone. Thank God for caller ID. You can look and say, not today. Lord, forgive me. I can't do it today, God. Because you already know. You already know. And I said, Lord, I'm going to pray for them. But today I can't do this. 
You can't do it. You know, because they're going to go on. I have, I have some people that go on and on. And it's a woe is me and woe is that. And on and on and on. And then when you're trying to minister to them, because they talk about where they go to, every job they go to is the same thing. So you said, you know, mm, you're the common denominator here. So, and, But their heart is hardened to that because they just want to release bitter, bitter, bitter. And I've been in situations like that. And that thing can vex your spirit. I, 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 I was in a, a situation where an apostle talked about this. I was at a church. And we're just standing there talking. And all of a sudden, these two leaders started running the leader and his wife down. I was frozen. I couldn't move. That thing messed me up for a minute. That, that bitterness, that hostility, that gossip that tore you down. And, and, and I said, no, I, I can't. I, I removed myself from it. And that's what this does. When the root of bitterness is in someone's spirit, it has become a part of them. It's toxic. It's poisonous. They're hurting themselves behind something that somebody did a long time ago. And really, maybe it did happen, but maybe sometimes it's in their mind. It might not have happened. It's their perception that they have made their reality. But you see it operating them. They're bitter about everything and everybody. You know, they don't have anything positive to say. And when they become embittered, it takes a root and it grows. It forms a poison. They don't even, they not even dealt with the old hurt because it feels good to hold on to it. They just hypercritical everything. Look at her. I I remember when she was, I remember. Look at him. And in church now. Good place to be. Good place to be. In Jesus. Amen. And they know how to push that hot button. They want you to react in such a way. They say, "Uh uh-huh, see, uh uh-huh, I told you. I had a reason for holding on to this. I had a reason for being better. I told you she was going to do that. It feeds them with negativity, with bitter emotions. But it also defiles us and those that we come in contact with. This is a time and this is a season when we need to go out in the hedges and the highways and compel them to come in that God's house may be filled. This is a time that even those that have left leave this 99 and go after that one. This is a season where God is saying, I've got to make you ready. There are people out there that are hurting. They're lost. We've never gone through this situation with the pandemic before. There are people that are frightened. They're operating under the spirit of fear, which God did not give us. But they need to hear someone say, God, that's a spirit that didn't come from God. And we came to break the spirit of fear off of your life today in the name of Jesus and usher them into the presence of God that they can come in and serve God and that he can who begins the work can perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. This is a season that we've got to let it go and let God. Amen. Hallelujah. Cut off Jesus. Ah, he said it cuts us off from the life-giving root in Christ. It separates us from Jesus. It's a sinful nature, and God cannot look down upon sin. He came to set the captives free. He sent Jesus as our Savior, hallelujah, to reconcile us unto God, to forgive us for our sins and for every shame that we've encountered in life. Jesus is the answer. Amen? He is the answer to the root of bitterness that you feel. He came to heal us. He came to set us free. We just have to invite him into in. We got to confess it with our mouth and believe in our heart to Jesus Christ. He's Lord. He is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I said before, it affects us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. It is a toxic thing. Hallelujah. And and, and these things God said that we were going to have. He said, in this life, you will have tribulations. Oh, they're going to come. But he said, be of good cheer. He didn't say be bitter. He said, I have overcome them all. He didn't say some. He said, what? All. All he has overcome. But the power is in our tongue. Death and life is in our tongue. We have to speak and decree what thus said the Lord. Amen. God said his word does not return into him void. Say what the Lord says. Let go and let God. He said, if you hold your peace. Hallelujah, I'm going to fight your battle. I just need you to stand still and to see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. It is time to let it go. 
Cut it off. Uproot that bitterness. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So we look unto Jesus, who's the author and finisher of our faith, who endured the cross, despising the shame. And he sat down now at the right hand of the throne of God, making intercessions for us. He did it for you. He did it for me. He did it for every situation and circumstance that you have been encountering in life. Yeah, we all have been hurt in some way. We've all encountered some kind of pain. But he said in the last days, I want to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. But you got to let it go. You got to let this thing go. You got to be uprooted. He paid the price on the cross for every pain, every hurt, every spirit of rejection every abandonment whatever the enemy sent to kill still and destroy God said I sent my son it was nailed to the cross hey with Jesus hallelujah hallelujah he already paid the price all we have to do is open up our spirit to receive him hallelujah the battle is not yours it's the Lord's Jesus fulfilled the plan of the father to reconcile his people unto him it's time to let it go Perhaps many of us was like Naomi. We had, we were full. We were full of ideas. We had relationship goals. We had educational goals. Business ideas. We wanted a family. We wanted a marriage, but it ended in divorce. What a beautiful testimony, daughter. God can do anything. With man it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. What a blessing. Somebody needed to hear that today. Yes. Amen. We had the dreams of becoming business persons, but circumstances of life came and hit us hard. Yes. Seeds of bitterness came even in utero. Rejection. Yes. I don't want another baby. I don't want this baby. I wanted a boy. I don't want a girl. I'm not. I don't want it. I don't want it. And that word goes through the placenta to the baby. You never bond with the baby. There's no love. So then that just spirals other problems. And that child comes with issues, with bitterness, unforgiveness, with hatred, with anger. That spirit of rejection. The pain of an abortion. The pain of a miscarriage, not being able to conceive again, the pain of rape, the pain of molestation, the pain of violent relationships. Yeah. This month is domestic violence awareness. And let me just inter interject here that it's never okay for you to take dominion over another human being. The word of God said he gave us to the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the beasts of the field, but not another human being. No one should ever have to be subjected to hurt, humiliation, to be hit, to be cursed, to be emotionally, psychologically, and even sexually abused. That is not who God formed the woman to be. Amen. We have a pain. We are job loss. As I said, it could have been me. It would have been me. It should have been me. If it wasn't for the blood, when that job was taken from me, but the enemy had to give it back. Because when he's found out, because I went through that like a good soldier, God said, now I can restore. You're ready to receive the promotion. Amen. He said, maybe you have the pain of a loss of a family member. Maybe it was tragically. Maybe it was the death of a loved one or a pain of a disappointment in a relationship, choosing one relationship after another, looking for love in all the wrong places, only to be hurt, misused, and abused. God said it's time now to let that go. Amen. Yeah, God, I thank you, God. He said there's some people that said, I wish I had another mommy or another daddy. I, I don't like my parents. Then you have words that parents speak to their children. You're just like your daddy. You're just like your mama. You're going to never amount to nothing. Those word curses that's been spoken over your life. Seeds of bitterness that's been deposited in an atmosphere that should be made, made uh, of, of love. That should be a nurturing environment. One that you speak life into that child. Remember the power of death and life. Death 
and life are in your tongue. And they that love it will eat the fruit of it. What kind of words are you releasing over your babies? What kind of words are you releasing to your husband? You would never be nothing. You've lost this job. You've done that. Speak life. Hey. And that more abundant life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's time to let it go. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory to Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. It's time to walk in your new thing. Leave the old things behind. Leave them seize the bitterness. Put them aside. Leave them. The woman at the well left them water pots at the well. She was delivered. She left them. And she moved on. She no longer had to look for love in the wrong places. One man after another being ostracized and rejected by the women in the community. When Jesus came, he sat on the well. The well was deep. Some of the issues that we're dealing with, they're deep. But Jesus said, I overcame them all. I sat on the well. Hallelujah. All power is in my hands, said the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The man at the pool of Bethesda was there for 38 years. But that mat that he was laying on because he was impotent, because somebody told him, hallelujah, that this is where you would be. But Jesus said, well, do you want to be made whole? He picked up his mat and he walked with it. He left it behind. All of those that didn't know that Jesus is our deliverer. He's our healer. Hallelujah. He's our song. He's our salvation. Hallelujah. He's a way maker. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, God. Lazarus left his grave clothes. When Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, he left the grave clothes behind. Leave the dead things behind. Walk in the newness of life, said the Lord. Old things have passed away. Cut off the bitterness. God said, let it go. Hallelujah. Let it go. Let it go. And let God. What do you need to let go of today? What is it that you've been carrying from year to year to year like an albatross on your back? What is it that you need to go? Hallelujah. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30, Come unto me, all you labor who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. God said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light, said the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time to let it go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this word. Hallelujah. I thank you, oh God. That, oh God, that you came to set us free, God. God, you said to tell the people and me first. It's time to let it go. Perhaps there's something that you've been holding on to today. Perhaps there's a place in your mind that is still reverberating like a broken record. It keeps playing over and over. You pause it, you rewind it, you play it. You pause it, rewind it, and play it. He said this. She, she, she did that. But God said, it's time to let that go. I remember that time. I, I wanted to do this in the church, and they wouldn't let me do it. So I ain't doing nothing. God said, it's time to let it go. I need you to be healed. I need you to be delivered. I need you to be set free. Let it go. Let go and let God. Maybe the marriage didn't turn out like you wanted. Maybe it ended in a bit of divorce. Maybe your children are wayward. But God said, stand still. Cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you, O oh God, that you've used me, God, for your glory. Lord, let it be pleasing in your sight, O oh God. Father, I release this word, and now, Father, it shall go forth and shall not return into your void. Father, that it will prosper into that empty which is sent. Father, I ask even now that you would touch those, oh God, who need to leave some things here today. 
Lord, that they would not leave the same way they came. In Jesus' name. The Lord said, let it go. Don't let pride hold you back. Don't let anybody looking at you or speaking anything about you keep you from coming and receiving what the Lord desires to give you. This word is from the throne room of God. Not of Rose, but all of Jesus. Won't you come and let God have his way? God bless you.